Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. Today we are like to talk about how to make this XOXO bracelet and how do you set it up for the hinge. Are you ready? Let's get started. So I'm going to come to the top view and draw a reference uh, circle for what is the end product size going to be. And I'm going to try the diameter for 60. And that is a standard size for any of the bracelet. Um, you can make it longer or shorter. But this is about the size that what we would like to have. And from there, you can kind of model accordingly so you won't get it too big or too small. And starting with our first element here by giving a reference again, I would like to snap in right in the middle and kind of see how big of a size do I need it. It could be really square uh, by just holding the shift for that X element right there, or it could be like a red rectangular shape it depends on what you like to do so I'm going to do the square over here and uh, roughly it's about just a little bit over 10 millimeter and of course I'm going to draw a mark right here from this point to this point all right so this is a reference of for us and if I'm going to have a circle or the other element it probably will go from here to here all right, so this is where we want to draw the heart. So let's go ahead to draw the heart first. I'm gonna using the curve and snapping into this endpoint and coming uh, follow with my nearest arm and follow uh, the shape or something like that. And of course, in the middle, we want this kind of a dipping a little bit like this. And you can adjust it, um, whichever the shape of the heart that you want. And this might be like a two pointed and we can adjust it later. And this might be a little bit two point and maybe I need just one more point right there. So just gonna go ahead to adding one more uh, control point. So then I can edit this without changing too much of the steep over here. All right, so kind of uh, play around to find the shape that you like. We might we might still need to change it later. It's because they actually need to fit in into the X shape there. All right, so that's one of it. And for the shape right here, I'm just gonna draw an arc and maybe go from here to here and something look like this. And think about, actually I should draw on the other side, but that's just simply mirror to the other side there. Okay, and let me join this one as well. All right, think about if uh, we have this heart and that has to fit it in there and it's kind of blocking uh, the metal so you won't have a nice fit over there. So we need to adjust this one as well. So we are going to uh, rebuild this curve and then we are going to rebuild into the seven count. And so now we have those points we can kind of moving around something like this. So I will have still have the bump on the bottom, but it's kind of a caving over there. It will be easier to fit it in there. All right, this shape may not look as good. Let me, let me actually did it on the other side. We just need to find the best fit here. Maybe I want this one to be lower. And maybe I want to use a smooth command uh, to make it a little bit rounder like this. Okay, so we're going to do another test uh, to see if that fit. I'm going to rotate it and make sure copy equal yes. And I want to rotate it 180 degrees to get our first element right there. And let's go ahead to join it. And then we also wanted to round the edges a little bit. So let me round it with uh, 0.5 millimeter here and 0.5 millimeter here. All right. And then we're going to do another test to see if that heart is going to fit in really well. So let's go to do the mirror and coming over here. All right, so thinking about that, we are going to have a pin to go through and the pin will possibly right there. And then the heart need to be get in a little bit more. 
so something like this will be the end the pin itself um, you might want to think about 0.7 millimeter so let's give it a reference line I'm going to have this line and offset for 0.4 millimeter that will be the whole size and also offset on the other side and then let's just group those piece all right so it kind of uh, and change into and change into the red color so it's kind of give us an idea now this line might be too thin over there so I might need to move it out here but you do not want it to have it too thin over there too so maybe what we need to do on this one is this heart need to move in a little bit more by moving a little bit more and this one we can move it here too uh, you kind of see it's blocking there so we will need to have this line to move in even more like this okay so now we got everything correct the bottom one doesn't need to be moved um, that's did it this one exploded this one let's go ahead to did it those and again we wanted to use this one to rotate it with a copy equal yes and flip it here all right and now this one won't block uh, I can simply just blend the curve in between here and here and also in between here and here alright so now this is a better fit there let's go ahead to use the mirror and we want to mirror from here to here alright double make sure that will fit right so you want to make sure that you have enough metal you do not want this like hanging on outside too much you also need to leave a little bit space right here it's because the space right here is allow it to bend right so you cannot have it 100% touching like this then uh, your pin probably will break easy okay so now what we have this let's go ahead to finish the heart we want this heart to be mirrored to the other side starting from here to here and we want to give a fitted edges here on the top I might want to try 0.5 millimeter on the bottom here let's try something bigger uh, maybe two to get it really nice and rounded on the bottom okay so now this is our basic we can creating the solid for it all right so for to make it this into the solid and perfect I'm going to split with the point roughly about here another one roughly about here okay and then so now we got our two rail here we need to create in the cross section I'm going to use the arc tool and snipping roughly about here and here then you want to come in into the top view holding the shift so then you get this really bumpy here now if this is like too tall for you you can always go a little bit lower by dragging those three control points and then move it down all right so that's creating the surface we are going to use the sweep to rail rail one rail two and you got the end point right here and then you pick up this cross section and you click on the point again and coming into this end point all right so that's how you get this one right now we have this surface and we wanted to mirror this that this one to the other side and it's going to be like this right now notice that they two of them are the same height so if you look at the render view it's gonna look like this is pretty ugly so one of them we are going to make it a little bit lower by using 1d scale so I'm going to snapping any point and just bring it down a little bit like this so you will have this uh, X shape there so we're going to pick up the curve back and let's join it and because we need to make it into the solid so I'm going to use surface command that you have extruded curve straight and for how tall you want it to have so roughly it's about two and a half millimeter I'm going to set a high over there so now we have this one let's go ahead to join those two surfaces 
and using the command cap to close it. So now this one is a solid, right? But if it is a bracelet and it is solid and it is gold, it's going to cost you a lot of money and it's pretty heavy. Uh, when, when it is heavy, it, it tend to flip uh, while you're wearing this. So we actually need to make it hollow. Two ways you can make it hollow. One, you can use the show command, but this might be too tight because this uh, tiny radius there. Let's give it a try. We want to use the show command and we want to keep the wall thickness for maybe 0.7 millimeter. And then I click on this uh, base. All right. So as you can see, the result is not solid. Like what I say, maybe this is too tight there. All right. To solve this issue, what we can do is uh, we can creating a, this solid and just by scale 3D down and then tilt it a little bit and make it longer, for example, coming out like this, and then you can ball in difference. But in that case, you can see the thickness in between uh, the outer and the inside is not consistent, right? Uh, it keep the shape there, but it's not consistent all the way. I don't like it, right? So the way I think it's better to do is we are going to pick up this curve over there and I'm actually going to offset for the certain thickness I want. So I'm going to stay with the 0.7 millimeter for the interior. So once we get this one, let me turn it into the uh, green color here. So now that green line over there is what we are going to extrude it. And but look at this. Mm, maybe the red line is easier to see. So look at this line, right? it's so sharp. Anything that you want to consider casting, you want to avoid the sharp point. So we are going to uh, give it a fillet for something small. Let's try point three here. So round it over there. And we want to do point three as well. So round it over there. It's also good for us to, uh, to do this way is because that completely avoid this area that we are going to punch the hole and so that will make it more um, solid uh, over there structure wise all right so this one i'm just going to extrude it straight uh, with the solid and now i have something like this let's give it a try bowling difference this guy out of this guy all right so see beautiful Nice and beautiful and even, and we have a very solid over here. Okay, so now we are going to do the same thing to the other side. Let's pick up the curve over here, and let's go ahead to um, surface, extrude a curve straight for the same high, two millimeter, and then join them. After that, using the cap command to make it solid, and then we need to cut it out middle part. So pick up the original curve offset for 0.7 millimeter. At the same time, we are going to round it off this corner and this corner. Okay, so with the new curve that we have, go ahead to um, extrude planar curve straight. So now you have the color going to use the bowling difference this one and this one all right so now i'm looking at this you can uh, bowling split this one out if you want to for the demonstration i'm going to just leave it there let's talk about the heart here so now to making the heart i'm going to just pick up all this heart uh, curve here and join together simply just uh, extrude them so i'm gonna Go to the solid, extrude the planar curve, go maybe a little bit taller. And actually, I want to move it down a little bit like this. So they are roughly the same high. And then uh, remember, this one is like 0.5 millimeter. So I might uh, be OK to get away just smaller than a 0.5 millimeter there for the uh, filler edges. So I'm going to try. Um, 0.49 millimeter and let's try 0.49 for all of this okay 
pretty. And we are going to use a shell command on this one to see if that works. If not, we can always go back with the same way because this is, doesn't have a really tight area. So this one worked better. Now I'm looking at it. My heart is a little bit shaking on this side, but that's okay uh, for this demonstration. Okay, so now we have this. Uh, we need to punch the hole there. I'm simply just going to ungroup those guy, and then one of it, I'm going to pipe it. The radius for 0.4 millimeter. That's roughly about 20 gauge wire there. Um, this is the going to punch the hole, and the wire itself, it's going to be 0.7 millimeter, just a little bit smaller. All right. So I'm going to move this one lower, roughly right in the center like this. And if you want a hole to be a little bit bigger, so you can uh, put it the 20 gauge wire and that will be fine too. All right. So now after fine tune with this one for the rendering, I do need a pin there. So I'm going to making a copy and hiding one of it first. So I'm going to use a bowling split and we are going to have this one be split by this one and this one. Okay, so I can get rid of this one here, this one here, and we actually going to join this and this together. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, kind of bowling union back. All right, um, so that way we'll have a pin there. Um, I'm going to turn it on the original one. Let me turn this into the red color. All right, so to punching the hole, we need to have this one to the other side. So let's go ahead to mirror that one with the center there. So that way we can punch the hole. We also need the hole punching on the other side of the heart. So I'm going to mirror with the midpoint right here. And then that will be the hole we are going to punching on those two elements. So first of all, let me bowling this one first. And the second thing is we are going to use those two and bowling difference out of those bar. All right, so now you see uh, we have the hole punching. The guy over here was the pin that we have. Now I'm going to turn this one into the red color. And for the better rendering, if you see the rendering like this, and it's like nothing there, right? So to make the rendering better, you actually can uh, chamfer or fill the edges. And we want something so small, like 0.1 millimeter on the edge of the rod that is putting in there. So now if you take a look on the render view, you're going to see it feel like there's something in there. If you want it to look nicer, you can even uh, you can even fill the edges on this one as well. So in the rendering, it will look like there's a pin there. So we're going to do that on uh, this edges as well and also the other edges. So they both have the fillet there. Let's do here. If some people will ask me, say, do you actually need to do the fillet on a lot of things? Uh, ideally, yes, uh, because it will just looking better on the render. But if the render is not the main things that you are doing, um, you just want a casting and this fit is tiny, tiny. It actually doesn't make much of a difference on the casting. So no, in that case, you don't. But if fit it is part of the design, then yes, you need to do that. It's like this making puffy the big fillet there. It's hard to have a jeweler to kind of shape them all in the same way. So in that case, yes, you need to fill it that. I hope that uh, explain uh, some of the question that you may have. All right, so now um, if you are going to stop here and casting, that will be fine. But if you are going to do the rendering, you probably need to have it um, 
have them to flow into this one nicely. So what we wanted to do is we're going to pick up this element right there and we're going to bring it to the front. And you might want to um, angle it. So I'm going to angle it something like this and moving copy equal no and rotate it like this way. And before I rotate it the other one, I need to mirror the pin there. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to rotate it somewhere in the middle and something like this. Okay, so all we need to do is pick up all of this and we are going to array. Uh, coming to the transform, you have array along the curve and we're going to array the base curve uh, how many I don't really know. Let's give it a try for 10. And it is not touching. So let's give it a try for 11. And it's much better. So maybe 12. Okay, so 12 is too much. 11 is not enough. So I'm going to stay with the 11 and make sure my history is on. So once I have this, um, because the history is on, what I can do is I can pick up the original object that I have for array and I wanted to move them just in a little bit, right? So you will line up the hole a little bit better there because we use a uh, last element for that, okay? And then so that will give you a better rendering look. So this one, I also have a ton and um, doing a box uh, over here for the clasp. If you are interested about how to make this clasp, I actually have a whole course teaching you 11 to 13 different type of a clasp. And also you have a free model to use uh, for your rendering. If you're interested on that, I will put the link at the description below. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you like it or you have other suggestions. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next.